Hi everyone, it's Mike with another electronic music project. I was working on my next YouTube project, which will be coming up pretty soon, when I got sidetracked, as I often do. And I built this. It's a Univibe type effects pedal with a few extra features. I came across a YouTube video about the Univibe which is a guitar effects pedal from the 60s made famous by people such as Jimi Hendrix. It was made by a Japanese company called Shinai and is a cross between a phaser, chorus and tremolo. Although it's not really any of these. It has its own unique sound and over the years many copies, clones and variations have been made. There's a vast array of modern versions as well as loads of useful information online in forums and such like about the history, schematics and how to build one. In this video I'll show you how to build my version of this effects pedal with a few twists of my own which I hope you'll find interesting. And as usual I'll post links below to schematics and code. As always I'll start with a bit of a demo to give you an idea of what it sounds like. This is straight through with no effects. As on the original, there are two effects available, chorus and vibrato. You can vary the speed. and the depth I've added a couple of extra features, a second speed pot with a foot switch so you can reset a fast and slow speed and switch between the two. And finally I've added a ramp rate pot with a toggle switch to switch the feature on and off. This gives an effect similar to a Leslie Rotary speaker speeding up and slowing down, which was the original idea of the Univibe in the first place. I've yet to label the controls and will probably use printed clear plastic stick-ons. Anyway, here's a brief description. The first part is the overall volume. Next is the depth control. And then the first speed control. On the next row is the vibrato chorus select switch. The ramp on off switch. Ramp rate control. And the second speed control. These are the three LEDs indicating LFO activity, ramp on off, and speed one or two selection. Finally we have the bypass foot switch and the speed one or two foot switch. The input jack is on this side, output is here. 
and the DC input socket is located on the back. This is the prototype on breadboard. And it consists of a low frequency oscillator on this board using a PIC 16F1825 to generate a PWM signal which drives this little LM380 audio amplifier which in turn drives a 12 volt lamp on the other breadboard where the analog input signal from the guitar is processed. I covered the lamp and LDRs temporarily under this makeshift cover to keep out the ambient light just for testing. I used an ordinary incandescent lamp to drive the four light dependent resistors as in the original because it gives a much more linear response compared to an LED which is non-linear. You can hear the difference quite markedly. The prototype was powered by 9 volts DC which I later increased to 12 volts but the unit works perfectly with input voltages ranging from 9 to 15 volts with virtually no discernible change in performance. But it's important to use a regulated power supply. The final circuit ended up looking like this, with the pick here, the LM380 here, and the dual and quad op-amp chips here. This is the 5 volt regulator IC to supply the pick, which draws about 10 milliamps. So you can use a small LM340 in a TO92 package, rated at 100 milliamps. Here's the lamp surrounded by the four LDRs, which I covered later with a piece of scrap plastic off an old chair leg. Now let's have a brief look at the schematics. This is the signal processing section of the pedal and it's based on Tom Hollis's great design of 2001, so my thanks to him. It consists of six bog standard op amps just about anything will work here. I used a TLO82 and a TLO84 for the dual and quad op amps respectively. When I started this project I was going to build the original discrete transistor version for an authentic sound, but after looking at the simplicity of Tom Hollis's design I decided to see if it sounded okay. Turns out it sounds pretty good and I think my final design was fairly uncomplicated and easy to build so I went with it. The first op amp, one half of the TLO82, is a preamp with a gain of about two and a half. I increased the gain slightly from the original so that a better balance could be obtained with the level control when switching between effect and bypass. The other half of the TLO82 is used to generate a mid-rail voltage which will always be half the supply voltage no matter what supply you are using between 9 and 15 volts. This is different to the original design which only works for 9 volts. The next four stages are phase shifting circuits with different operating frequencies and each stage's effect is changed cyclically by varying the resistance of its LDR, the light dependent resistors and this is achieved by varying the brightness of the lamp. The values of the four phaser caps are identical to the original Univibe. There are two selectable types of effect, vibrato and chorus. When vibrato is selected with this switch, the output of the phaser section only is heard, and this is quite a subtle but genuine vibrato effect as opposed to tremolo, that is, the frequency of the incoming guitar signal changes up and down, whereas with tremolo the amplitude changes. When you select chorus, the phasing effect is mixed with the original guitar signal which produces the amazing effect associated with this type of pedal, a mixture of phaser, chorus, vibrato and tremolo. It really is a quite unique sound. And the lamp is in the LFO or low frequency oscillator circuit shown here. The LFO is a sine wave oscillator with an adjustable frequency of between about 1 Hz 
to about 19 Hz. I experimented with a lot of LFO circuits of the type normally used in the Vibe circuits, but I battled to get a stable, wide range sine wave with little distortion. Also I wanted the frequency to ramp up and down to simulate a Leslie speaker speeding up and slowing down. The original Univibe achieved this by having the option of a foot pedal that could control the frequency of the LFO. I found the easiest way to achieve all these things was to use a cheap pick micro using the analog inputs to measure three potentiometer levels for the two speeds and ramp rate and a PWM output to generate a low frequency sine wave which goes to another pot to set the depth. The PIC also monitors the speed foot switch and the ramp on off switch with LED indicators here. These two caps and a resistor filter the PWM signal to get rid of the unwanted pulse artifact and the output of the depth control goes to a very simple amplifier circuit comprising just two components and an 8-pin LM380 audio power amp. The LM380 produces ample power to drive the 12-volt lamp at its output where a loudspeaker is normally found. Also I included an LED here as an indicator on the front panel to show what the lamp is doing. Finally, this 20k preset sets the output to just start clipping when the depth is set to maximum. You could use an 8.2k fixed resistor here instead, but I found that it was very handy to be able to set the output to actually go into clipping at maximum depth, which gives a quite distinct sound at this setting. The unit uses very common and readily available parts and the most expensive item was the powder coated Hammond enclosure I got on eBay at around £15 including delivery. The only tricky part for some people might be programming the PIC which does require a programmer. Available very cheaply online the necessary software is free and really quite straightforward to use. Well that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video and I would greatly appreciate any comments or questions below. See you soon with another electronic project.